Hi, my name is Alex. Thank you, Ash and the AlterConf team. This is amazing. I'm so happy to be a part of this and to contribute to this really important conversation. Um, so I'm Alex. Say hi, fork me, tweet me. Uh, I am a community manager currently at OutSystems, um, currently head of community there. And I've managed a lot of online uh, community forums and communities in the past. And this is basically a summary of my experience. Uh, best practices and solutions. All right. Cool. What's coming up for you to stare at? Uh, intro and background, issues and solutions, uh, my perspective as a community manager, and then how you can use some of this to manage your community. So the internet is a shared public resource. It should be treated in the same way that we treat things like other shared public resources, like a park. Um, you know, it's really a place where everyone shares knowledge, comes together, works, and plays. And unfortunately, there is, um, cyberbullying is on the rise, and it's only trending upwards. And this is a really big problem. 40% of uh, internet-using adults have experienced online harassment. Um, one moment, my speaker notes aren't showing. Um, so 40% of internet-using adults have experienced harassment online, and a quarter of women ages 18 to 24 have been sexually harassed. It's incredible. 26% 26, 26 of people have reported being stalked. Uh, there's unfortunately a really strong narrative online that online is not real life, and it unfortunately also affects women, um, LGBTQ people, and people of color a lot more. Um, online harassment and abuse is not, uh, it's a societal problem, it's a community problem, it's our problem, it's everybody's problem. People are comparing online communities to like cities that aren't even safe to walk in anymore. And this is an issue. Everything is not fine. <laughs> and ignoring the behavior is not the solution. So I like to think about it, um, harassment as, do you feel bad after you've engaged with this person? Do you feel oppressed? Do you feel humiliated? Do you feel de-energized? Do you feel belittled? This is all harassment. You know, sometimes people have a bad day or they're slightly extra sensitive, but it's important to look for patterns. So an online bully or cyber bully can be defined in many ways, and these are two ways that really stuck out to me. Uh, so an intentional act that's conducted through digital technology um, you know, to hurt someone, and usually over time or repeatedly. And the sec one, second one, a person who intentionally uses, um, you know, threats to cause fear in others. So I've highlighted the word intention a few times because I think that is really the main differentiator that we're talking about here. So what is the intention behind somebody's thoughts or actions? Um, unfortunately, free speech laws in the United States are some of the most broadest in the world. And the First Amendment actually even protects hate speech in some instances. Uh, so we really need to make sure that we spearhead efforts to enforce laws and prohibit um, online threats. And when the intent is to silence the victim, that is an attack on free speech. Fighting abuse and harassment is a super vital part in empowering people to be their whole selves online, um, give them the freedom of expression that they deserve, and make sure that we keep the internet for everybody. Technology is best when it connects everyone, when everyone feels represented, when everyone's participating. This is how we solve all these big problems in the world. And who's responsible for this? Is it me as the community manager? Is it the platform? Um, is it the government? You know, I think everyone is. Everyone in this room and beyond is responsible for doing this. So some of the issues that I've been seeing is that it's hard to get a suitable database about how extensive this is, especially because there's a lot of closed off communities. There's private forums, private messaging, uh, chat logs, and it makes it hard to access to see how prevalent this is. There's also a high volume, volume of entries, which we've seen in the last election, unfortunately, and that makes it hard for moderators and community manager, managers and teams to really sift through all this, especially without any help from automation. And of course, there are tons of language and culture dynamics that come into play, and it makes it hard to determine intention um, and sometimes harassment. And people are trying to stop this in silos. They're trying to do it individually when really that's not the approach that we need. 
Also, uh, lawyers and communities disagree on what, you know, actually defines harassment and what is that. So for those of you who still don't think this is an issue, although I doubt there's anyone here, um, I did a Twitter poll and I asked people um, if they've been harassed online. And I had such an overwhelming response um, not only in the votes, but just from people commenting and private messaging me. Um, it was truly heartbreaking. I'm going to try to keep this a little lighter, um, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can see 67% said yes more than once. Um, a quick example, let's see. So the one on the bottom, she was going to, she stops going to tech meetups now. Um, one reason was because they weren't having code of conduct and she was experiencing, uh, you know, bad times at tech, conference, or tech conferences and meetups. And so again, a code of conduct is imperative for every event uh, that you have. Um, another woman, she was doxxed, and she actually, her f like friends and family were fooled by this person to get personal information out, and so she had to like have this horrible conversation with her family, like, don't give out my information, um, and yeah, it was just, it was terrible. I asked the same question to the men of Twitter, and um, overwhelmingly said no, but then also 42% did say yes more than once, and I was um, unfortunately surprised by this. And we had a few reactions as well. Um, but this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> so what are the solutions? Uh, we need to develop algorithms and tools that really can automatically assess, uh, assess and detect and remove this harassment. You know, as a community manager, it's really to uh, tolling to read things and be involved in that. So the more automation, it can help our psyche and everything. Uh, it needs to be recognized and treated as a social problem because it is. Um, and we need to create methods of handling um, and consequences for these actions. We also need to get out of our tech silo. We need to think about other industries um, and you know, fields of research and social and psychological and behavioral. And you know, pre-bullying elements, so you know, detecting before it happens, being more proactive than totally reactive all the time. And prevention strategies, so stiffening penalties who actually commit this abuse. Again, there's like the online isn't real life, but it is, especially when it goes offline uh, from doxing and swatting and threat threatening. There needs to be um, proper, proper uh, penalties for these people. So in order to solve this issue, it's going to take all of us. And, you know, bullying is an old social phenomenon, and it's rooted in the core of human nature. Um, but it's just now taking form in the digital infrastructure. And it is really the societal problem of the virtual age. So here's a little bit of a perspective from me as a community manager and how you can approach this. Um, there's a lot out there, and I've really stood on the shoulder of giants. So it's really good to remember that tools that you know, might have built can be misused, even if they were built for a certain reason or if they were positive, they might be misused and usually are. Um, and, you know, we have to continue to break down cultural, mental, and design barriers when we're designing spaces and online communities. Um, I had this idea of creating troll bounty programs, you know, similar to bug bounty programs. We can incentivize hackers to actually squash, squash these trolls and develop potential solutions for platforms. Um, you know, that keeps the talented developers actually positively contributing rather than, um, you know, feeding. Uh, code of conduct. I'm just really going to keep hammering this home because it is so important. Every community, uh, every platform, every event needs a code of conduct. Um, it has to be comprehensive. You have to have rules and make sure that everybody adheres to them. Um, and that's how you keep everyone safe, secure, and happy. So you also want to encourage your members to contribute so that they feel empowered and they actually um, help to create this respectful space. And I'm going to go into a few examples of um, companies that I think have a really good approach in this. So there's a lot of things as a moderator and a community manager that you need to keep in mind when you're building a code of conduct. And it can become complex, but, um, you know, discourse handles this really well from what I've seen. And these guidelines don't have to be as complex as they need to be, but they do need to exist. Uh, you see, as an example, McDonald's has, you know, a simple drive through code of conduct, simple guidelines. If McDonald's drive through has it, why doesn't everywhere else have it? 
So Discourse set out some general guidelines um, for approaching when you're developing code of conduct. Uh, make sure that they're short enough to skim, but you're not leaving out, you know, um, you're not leaving out what's really important, and it's not just a block of text. Uh, have positive, upbeat tones in it, and you know, really, the code of conduct is for creating a civilized discourse. So Coral Project, one of the, my like most favorite communities in the space. Uh, they have some features of productive online communities. You know, you want to make sure that there are respectful interactions. You need to make sure that you acknowledge and enforce. Um, and that there's a consent model. You need to make sure, again, that everyone participates. Everyone is highly visible. They know who the community manager is. They know how to get help. They know what the features are if they need to flag it. Um, you want to create respectful engagement. And you need to make sure that it's easy to access and there's very clear guidelines for conversation. So the New York Times moderates this in the comments, which is pretty cool. They also demand that you have to justify your views, and they, the moderators, must be convinced that the intention, again, is to inform rather than to insult and enrage. I know that sometimes a lot of people are closing down comments and news, and the New York Times has a very good approach um, with that. Elo, uh, or Elo, I'm not sure how I pronounce it, they are really good at cultivating respectful online communities. I just love this quote. Ella was created by idealists who believe the essential nature of all human beings is to be kind, considerate, helpful, intelligent, responsible, and respectful. I just think that's amazing. That's what the community should be about. And they have you know, a whole list of really great things. This is just a snippet. Um, don't threaten people. Don't post other people's information. Don't spam. Don't hurt young people. Don't intrude on other people's privacy. Don't be a nuisance regarding technology. And their logo is a smiley face. <laughs> MZ um, is a really great example as well. <clears throat> so three really simple approaches by MZ. You have to be a member in order to actually participate, so that kind of uh, really tones down the drive-by trolling and makes that nearly impossible. And that's really, membership is key to stopping harassment. And unlike Facebook that requires you to post under your real name, you can actually set up um, different like profiles by community by community. So if you were potentially in like a neighborhood forum, you might want your identity to be known because you're talking with your neighbors. But if you're in a forum for abuse victims, you might want to be anonymous. And it's great because you can create all of these different profiles um, with MZ. But then also, uh, if there's a ban, if you somehow are harassing someone in one profile with one identity, then it goes for the whole entire, it just shuts your whole entire account down. So that really limits the ability to return under different aliases, which is super amazing. And they have these great community leaders that help exercise control over posts. And they have a very dedicated support team. So calling someone a troll, even if it's true, is feeding a troll. Don't do it. Um, don't you know, pollute the troll thread by you know, posting a reply. Um, what you do is you need easy moderating tools for the user. So flag it. Um, when people are able to just flag and moderate it, then it allows us community managers to not just keep get, you know, digging out the trash and taking out the trash and all that, and it can be like a self-policing environment. I'm going to talk really quickly about hack harassment. This, she's actually um, working with Lady Gaga Born This Way initiative as well, and they're just teamed up with Major League Hacking, because I really do think that this is hackable. They've got some super interesting projects, uh, especially on GitHub, a lot of open source projects. They're developing and gathering uh, data sets and algorithms and machine learning and natural processing to help automate this. Uh, for example, they just created this Twitter classifier project that you can contribute on GitHub right now. Um, I'd definitely check it out. So if you, the gist is, you need a code of conduct and you need to enforce it. And if not, you're letting toxic community members define your community. And this is crazy. So for every, um, for every one, for every one negative experience someone has, you need five positive to counterbalance it out. So you can imagine, if you have tons of trolls and horrible things going on, that's just going to create such a negative environment for people, and it's hard to bounce back from. Um, so you really need to remember, no matter who is in your community and what status or privilege they may have, if they're negatively contributing, uh, they need to go. 
when you allow for harassment, it doesn't just affect the victim. Um, it affects all the people who are lurking uh, and watching and also pulls in people to kind of fuel it. Uh, it drowns out the voices of ethnic uh, people and minorities and young people and other people who are vulnerable, and it causes people to not join a community. So just shut it down. <laughs> Jeff Atwood, um, he is an incredible community resource. He created discourse. He says, asking nicely has its limits. Eventually, you must take action. So just really sums it up perfectly for me. So here are some quick tactics. Um, act on the bad behavior, right? When you get a sense that people are engaging in a negative way, nip it in the butt right away. Um, you send them a little gentle private message. Just really make sure that you're on top of that. And reinforce good behavior on the other end of that. If someone's maybe had a bad streak, but then they're starting to be collaborative and post positively, like that, you know, encourage that. Don't gossip or allow gossiping. Um, you know, I've actually seen for the intellectual trolling, why my talk is called that, I've actually seen a lot of people who are very intellectual, maybe a little socially awkward, that are victimized a lot of the time. Um, you know, sometimes this intensity and this passion that we find in these, like, super users can be seen as hostility. And so you really need to be sensitive and try to see both sides. Because um, most of the time, the bully is just a really, really passionate person. And how they output that is sometimes gets lost in translation. So you really need to try to seek the truth. And start small. Always have warning systems in place. Try to be proactive and reactive and balance those. But you also have to make sure that this person is accountable for their actions. Uh, extend an olive branch. So treat them like a friend, but also like an adult, right? Um, go the extra mile. Try to find the truth. Be open, honest, and listen. Uh, meet them halfway. You know, always try to listen, but this can only go so far. You can't just continue to hold their hand. Monitor your tone. Um, you know, sometimes the super users or the most active users are the ones that are bullies. Um, and they're the one of the ones that are usually the most passionate or dedicated. But as a community manager, you have to foster that civilized place for discussion. So you want to make sure that your members' content and what they're contributing um, matches. So if they, you know, their reputation uh, matches the quality of their content. But it's not sustainable. Again, you can't just hold everyone's hand. That's what a code of, code of conduct is for. So some quick takeaways. Don't let negative people define the communities or you. Be the example um, and exemplify the type of community and the community person that you wish to attract. And community managers are the welcome mat of a community. So keep that in mind. Uh, do the best until you, uh, you can, until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. I really love this quote, um, you know, as a community manager, you really are the CEO of cultivating positive interactions um, online, and, you know, we know better. We know that this is a problem. Now it's time that we actually do better. So in these uncertain times, you know, a healthy internet is more important than ever, and we really need to make sure that we create a positive space and uh, make sure that the internet is for everybody. And that's it. Thank you.